I knew some of his music. I had no idea that he apparently had a uh, relationship with Coco Chanel. And when uh, Jan con contacted me with the script, and I, obviously I liked Jan very much when I met him, uh, I thought that was a fantastic opportunity to, to portray someone that you actually admire and that I knew very little about. Our access to understanding the person was very much uh, through his music, because a lot of things have been written about Coco and him, uh, but we don't really know whether it's true or not. So the music was absolutely true, so we had to dig into that and try to understand what kind of person is making music like that in, in the beginning of the 19th century. <laughs> I had to learn f French and Russian and play piano for the part and I didn't have a long time for that. I learned a little French in the school but that was so many years ago and luckily I play a Russian guy who's speaking French so we have to live with the accent. I read some of the books that was written about them, uh, him and her and uh, started listening to the music and heard about stories that people told but in the end of the day, I, I decided it was much more about the script and his music and, and the, obviously the affair with Coco. But the music was the main key for me to understand who he was. Sometimes you can feel with the director, this is going to be difficult, this is, we don't speak the same language. This is, but that was very easy. It was, um, even though he's French and I'm Danish, which is normally very different. <laughs> we laughed about the same things, we had the same uh, uh, hobbies and the same enthusiasm about things, and it was, it was very easy. We are both in love with the uh, comic books, and, uh, but we didn't know that from the beginning, we found out later on. It's a funny mix. He, he was very precise of uh, how he wanted it to be, to look. Uh, and, and, but, the, but the feeling of the scene, we could talk about that and we could improvise on that. Uh, obviously there was a certain limit of improvising with me and, and the language, but, uh, but if it was a physical scene or whatever we were doing, uh, there was a big room of discussing and, and, and figuring out how to solve the scene. I understood right after I met him, everybody told me that this is so uh, not Jan Kuhn in this film. This is so different for him to do and, and that's why they wanted him to do it as well, so that a little different energy came into the, to the, to the film. I mean, controversial is just, I mean, if you're controversial just to be controversial, it's one thing. If you are, if you are controversial because that's what you're doing and you didn't think about it, that's a different thing. She had very strong ideas about Coco Chanel and I had very strong ideas about uh, Igor Stravinsky. And Jan had very strong about, ideas about both of them. Uh, so it was very interesting because the film is about two very strong egos, him and her. Uh, and I think she was very perfect for the role. She has this very strange way of being very aggressive and very direct with things. And at the same time, she can be very fragile and, and very funny. Uh, so, so those two sides, I think, is a, is a perfect match for her character. Obviously, the French and the Russian was challenging, but I mean, when you start doing the scene, I, I can't think about it. It has to just go away. Uh, some of the music scenes, because I, I don't play piano, but I had to learn it. Some of the stuff where I do play, uh, even though they say, oh, we can always cheat and cheat, I said, no, I want to I wanna learn it. And that was very challenging, and, and, and it was, uh, I felt really good after some of the takes. It was fantastic. I don't know what precisely personal I brought into it, but I mean, I think every time I, I do a character, there's some, some part of me is in there. Uh, I think it's impossible not to bring yourself in there somehow, even though you see some of the guys who are, who are very famous for doing extreme characters, you will always see, oh, there's a little Daniel Deleuze in there, I see him. So obviously some of, of me is in there, but, but which part, I'm not sure. <laughs> I was just hoping that I would get some work when I started in Denmark and, and uh, one thing took the other and, uh, and all of a sudden there was a lot of focus on Danish films and that means that they also watch the actors and if they're looking for, 
foreign actors in, in foreign films, so they, they will ask Danish actors. So I was just in a, in a lucky wave, I think. Funny enough, I know that the producer, at least, had seen a film by Susanne Beer. It's, it's called Open Hearts. It's a Dogma film, which has absolutely nothing to do with the bad guy I play, but uh, it was one of her favorite films, and she just wanted to work with me, and um, so that's why I got the audition. <laughs> The French are very good to uh, watching other other language films, uh, but that would be it. Nowhere else in the world they do it. So, so whether it's going to open up the market or not, I'm not sure. As you say now, it's more genres are coming, and 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 the Swedes are coming back. They've been there many years ago, and, and hopefully there will be a lot of focus on Scandinavian films again. So it's not only the Danish actors who are being seen, but also the Swedish and Norwegian directors and actors. <laughs> They always do that. <laughs> and, uh, normally they love, they, they love the original film and then, then they change it so much that it becomes an American film, so, so maybe they shouldn't do it. One day, somebody's got to say enough. If I do this, I do it as a man. But you are not just a man. I mean, we have the, the main character called Perseus and he's taking a task that is on a suicide mission and unfortunately I have to go along with him. And I'm the, I'm the palace guard, I'm a general, and I don't find any, any reason in this mission at all. Uh, but I have to go. So I'm on the journey all the way with him and, and down the line I'm trying to teach him a couple of tricks and, and he teach me as well. He's driven by eight. So he survives. Well, Hannah Rising is coming up at a certain point, but we did that uh, one and a half year ago. So, uh, so work-wise, I'm, I'm just waiting a little and see what's happening.